in Sydney in Pollock, Louisiana. Hey, Sydney, how you doing? Very good, Tom. I was wondering why you can't read the rights of the people shall not be infringed upon. When you go bloody bloody, that's not what it says in the Constitution. And if you want to disagree with people having guns, that's fine. I don't care. But read the Constitution as it's written. I will read you the entire Second Amendment, Sidney. I have three copies of it. I will read it from beginning to end for our listeners who do not have three copies. And then we can have a conversation about it, okay? It yeah, says, sir, that's fine. It says, a well-regulated militia, comma, being necessary to the security of a free state, comma, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, comma, shall not be infringed, period. Now, now what does not infringed mean? Well, what does well-regulated militia mean? A well-regulated militia is everyone from the age of, uh, I think it was uh, 18 it was, or something. It was 17 to 47. It was 17 to 47 in the state of Pennsylvania where they, where they required every male to be part of the militia and they forbade standing armies. And they also required you to own a gun and 30 rounds of ammunition. And they required that it be kept in the town armory under lock and key. No, that would have made no sense at all, because how would have you had access to it? You have access to it when the civilian control says, time to open the armory. Uh, what did Thomas Jefferson quote on it? I, Jefferson has been all over the map on pretty much every issue you want. I'm I'm not sure uh, which. He one. said any free man should be armed at all times. No, I don't believe that Jefferson said that. That's got to be one of those made up quotes. I know that he he in one of his uh, letters to his nephew, who he it was kind of his surrogate son. He wrote about how he loved to walk in the woods and he always felt like he should carry a gun when you walked in the woods for balance. It was like you know to to to, to, to be carrying something, but you know that's the closest. And I've I've read a. A heck of a lot of Jefferson, and that's that's the closest I've gotten to that. But well, again, but here's Tom, here's the if question: you're not read If you're not going to have Amendment. a militia, what? Are you familiar with the Third Amendment? I, I'm having trouble hearing you. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. We've we, our our phone system screwed up here, and it, it's you know people people don't hear me all that well. But can you hear me okay now? Yeah, well, I'm hard of hearing too. Oh, okay. Well, that that probably makes that contributes it to you. Familiar with the Third Third Amendment, Sydney? Uh, about, uh, what's that, where you establish people can't, uh, you can't force people to keep a soldier in his house? That's right, quartering soldiers. Yeah, I, I don't have it here in front of me, but I know what it is. Yeah, okay. Um, we don't pretty much have that problem anymore in the United States, do we? No, but we could. So we by and large ignore that Third Amendment because nobody's trying to quarter soldiers. We don't have a standing militia in the United States anymore either, do we? We also do not have the right that uh, the Supreme Court ruled that the police department is under no obligation to protect the individual, only the public at large. Well, the public, in what case? They don't have to protect you. In what case was that? That was when the women were raped and the... They called the police. The police showed up. The police did not investigate. They left the house. The women were continued to be raped. Yeah. When they tried to sue the police department, it was ruled that they could not sue because they had no responsibility to protect the individual. I, Sydney, I suspect you're misreading that. It's really, really hard to sue the police for almost anything. The government, by and large, has immunity from lawsuit. Um, and I'm not sure what that has to do with guns. But thank you for the call.